Hello folks, today we're going to be implementing the VGG model. Now for those who don't know, uh, VGG model, uh, this is the original paper, um, it's, uh, well, the, uh, the paper is titled Very Deep Convolutional Networks for Large Scale Image Recognition. Uh, and the model itself is based on uh, the architecture that is described in this paper. Um, now, this paper is not necessarily very uh, recent, meaning that it was not published in 2022 or even 2021. It was published uh, at ICLR in 2015. But nevertheless, it's a very important paper, I think, um, by Karen Simonian and Andrew Zisserman, and I suggest you read this. Uh, but I'm not gonna be going over the paper today. We're gonna be doing uh, the implementation part, okay? We're gonna be doing research engineering. Um, okay, let's go, go ahead and do that. Um, so you're going to see that I actually changed um, the directory structure for the AI repository. Um, and uh, I have not pushed it to the uh, repository yet, but I'm going to push it once I record this video. Um, but you can see the directory structure now. We have this model directory. We uh, have function where we have a, a, con a convolutional and distance. So uh, implement, we implemented the convolution using uh, NumPy, uh, uh, only NumPy pretty much, distance functions, again, using only NumPy. We have different kinds of uh, activation functions as well using PyTorch. Um, and we have in a model directory, we have two subdirectories, DL and ML. ML are the models, I mean, it's kind of a rough divide. In ML, we are gonna have models that we implement using only NumPy and in DL, uh, we're going to have deep learning models. So that would usually use uh, libraries like PyTorch, JAX, uh, maybe TensorFlow, and so forth. So that's going to be like a rough kind of a, a layout or directory structure uh, that I have in mind uh, for this uh, uh, for this repository. Um, okay, so this one kind of a note I wanted to make for those who uh, are going to look into this uh, uh, once you know you watch the video or during uh, during the. Uh, uh, throughout the video. I don't know, maybe you want to follow me uh, and see, I don't know, see the code base in advance. I don't know. But yeah. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and implement the VGG model. Okay. Now, we're not going to be implementing like a specific variant of VGG. Okay, even in PyTorch, actually PyTorch has like a built in implementation of a VGG model. Of course, we're not going to be like using the implementation they have, we're not going to be copy pasting code that that just beats the purpose. Um, but I mean, maybe copy pasting the code is fine if, uh, if we're explaining what is going on here, but I have a different take on this implementation, I'm still going to have this make layers function. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so uh, they have this implementation of VGG models, or VGG model, but they do have different, uh, different kinds of architectures like VGG 11, 13, 16, and 19. We're going to support all of these architectures. Um, but one thing that we're not going to have is that we're not going to have pre-trained weights. And I think it's going to be more fun. Uh, so PyTorch provides this uh, uh, kind, of, kind of ability to use pre-trained weights uh, for model initialization. So you pretty much use the pre-trained model for classification. Okay, or maybe you're going to use uh, some chunk of the uh, VGG uh, model, maybe some layers, you're going to skip the, uh, uh, the cl class cl classifier layer, or classification layer, you're going to use these as embeddings or something. But anyway, we're not going to be using pre trained weights. So we're not going to have like image net uh, uh, trained uh, models or anything like that. Okay, so we're going to do a training from scratch. And we're going to use the CIFAR 10 data set. Now, as you may know, I think I mentioned it already, I'm not a big fan of the CIFAR 10 data set, but we're going to be using it because in a previous video for our custom CNN model, we use the uh, MNIST data set. And maybe, I mean, I thought, let's have, you know, more diversity with these data sets and maybe we're going to use like CIFAR 10. Not that, not because I, I, I love this data set, but because basically for the sake of uh, diversity here. Um, anyway, so yeah. I just wanted to note that PyTorch provides uh, its own VGG implementation. So, and you can look it up here. You can type in this GitHub com PyTorch. There's a vision. So PyTorch is the uh, organization name. Vision is the repository name. There is the torch vision directory. And then there is models directory. And then there is VGG.py and you can, you can uh, explore the code base. Anyway, let's get into the implementation now. Uh, so VGG variant, um, that defines basically all these, that defines, um, pretty much defines the layers, pretty much defines the architecture of a specific G BGG model. And you can see they have 11, 13, 16, and 19. We have 11, 13, 16, 
I've commented out the uh, 19, not because we're not going to support it, but because if I don't comment it out, if I save it, it's going to format it this way. I have a, a line limit of 100. Um, I kind of stick to that always. Um, and if I comment this out, then it's kind of, it does not look, you know, it does not, it's not necessarily very uh, uh, convenient to look at things this way. Of course, it would be, I think, uh, in actual production, if I'm, if I'm using this kind of stuff, I would probably put it into uh, like a JSON file or something. I mean, the configuration itself. But for the sake of uh, simplicity as well as clarity, I wanted to put this uh, kind of a dictionary of ints mapped to a list of ints or strings, right? It contains both. Um, yeah, so for the sake of simplicity, we're going to have it here. Um, um, and we're going to use this again for defining uh, the architecture of our model. Okay, now that we know basically uh, why we have this VG2 variant table or hash map here, a dictionary, um, let's go ahead and implement a VGG class. And once we implement that, let's run the training uh, uh, and uh, see what's going on there and then evaluate the model. Now, I'm not going to be running training for too long. I'm not going to do like a hundred epochs or anything like that. Maybe I'm going to do 10 epochs, but not more because it's going to take time. And maybe I'm also going to pause the video so that you don't have to wait till this is going to, uh, uh, till this is going to finish. Okay, so we're going to do, well, we're going to import torch and we're going to also import torch.nn as nn, okay? We're going to find a class, VGG, it inher inherits from nn.module because that's the way we define models in PyTorch. Um, it's going to be like a generic uh, VGG model representation. Okay, we're going to have uh, the uh, init function. Okay, it's going to take the variant integer as uh, a formal parameter of the uh, of the uh, 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 magic method, and you can probably guess why we're taking this in as the parameter because we can use 11, 13, or 16, or 19. Okay, and that's basically the way we initialize the model. Oh, is it like the VGG 11? Well, then we're going to use this architecture or the architecture defined by this list. And we're going to see how exactly that is useful. Okay. Next, we're going to need some features. Those are going to be image features. And we're going to need the classifier so that we can do classification. Now, um, for those who don't know, um, the uh, CIFAR, uh, CIFAR 10, uh, that data set, it, contain, it has 10 classes. Um, so it contains images that could be put into these 10 different uh, uh, classes. And so classifier is needed so that we can, I mean, I can tell you right away, this is going to be a, like a linear layer mapping in this case, 512 to 10, because uh, 512 is going to be the last layer output. And then 10, uh, the reason it's 10, because we have 10 classes. Okay. Nothing difficult here. Okay. We, we, we should pretty much understand everything here. If you don't understand something, please feel free to comment in the uh, comment section or uh, watch the previous uh, videos where I cover things like convolution, max pooling, and so forth. The only thing I have not covered yet is, uh, is the uh, batch normalization, but I'm going to cover that as well. I'm going to make a video about batch norm, uh, layer normalization, and group normalization. Uh, so batch normalization has some, uh, some problems, uh, but I'm not going to get into that uh, uh, today. Anyway, we have the initializer, okay? So uh, the init method, the init, ma init magic method, and what it does is that it performs inheritance, as you can see right here. Um, and it kind of defines model blocks in a way. And again, we're going to see how it defines it. Um, self that features uh, is the line that's going to define it. And we're going to see that it's actually uh, kind of cool. I like model building like this kind of automated style in a way. Um, we have forward, um, forward, of course, that uh, performs a forward pass, we're going to take some data, it's going to be torch tensor. Again, don't forget to annotate uh, the uh, 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 the functions, okay? So that's super cool, super important, okay? You can run PyWrite or MyPy on it. I mean, PyWrite is faster, but you could you could use MyPy as well. Uh, performs a forward pass, and we can have like a maybe like a layout or like a skeleton of this written out. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to say out is going to be self dot features out. You're going to see why this is going to be possible. Next, out, we're going to flatten it, uh, out.flatten1. And uh, finally, we're going to say out is self.classifier out, okay? Nothing difficult here. And again, we're going to see how this is going to work. Okay, 
We're going to need one more method here, okay? And we're done, okay? One more method. But this method is going to be the most important method in a way. Of course, everything is important, but this is going to be the cool method, okay? Um, so we're going to define this method called make layers. I call it make layers because, because uh, a PyTorch calls it uh, make layers. But you could, you, we could call it whatever, create layers. does not really matter. Um, and again, we're not doing like the PyTorch implementation. We're doing our own, you know, implementation of this. Um, well, actually, we're going to take model config. And it's going to be a list of either int or a string. And it's going to return nn.sequential. Okay. Uh, it might look a bit weird here. Like, why are we returning nn.sequential here? But, uh, um, I mean, I'm going to explain why. Okay. So, uh, make layers. What it does is that it pretty much, it pretty much uh, uses the configuration uh, and builds up a BGG model. Okay. Pretty much what it does. Now, uh, what we're going to need here are several kind of variables. First, layers. Second, in channels. Now, in channels, um, I'm going to initially put three. The reason I'm going to put three is that in, uh, the initial number of channels for the SIFR uh, 10 data set is three. It's like an RGB image. Um, it's not a grayscale, so it's not. If it was grayscale, we could put one here, but it's three. Now, uh, it would be more um, probably flexible if we put it in a, like, a configuration file of some sort uh, and would probably put this as well. Right, not here, but in the configuration file. But again, we're doing this so that it's uh, it's uh, uh, kind of clearer and uh, uh, more obvious how things work. But again, yeah, we would put it in maybe a JSON file. Um, in channels, again, this is like a option that we can configure uh, uh, based on the kind of image we're processing. Okay, and after that, we iterate over the model config. For val in model config, we do some stuff. In the end, layers, we're going to append nn.averagePool2D. Um, it's going to have a kernel size of 1 and the uh, stride of 1. And we're going to return nn.sequential of uh, layers. Okay. This is why we're returning the uh, sequential. Remember, what sequential does is that it pretty much allows you to chain different operations and we're going to chain a bunch of different things including having this average pool 2d in the end okay um how are we going to chain these well um well based on what we have in the list let's suppose we're uh doing bgg 11. what we do is that we iterate over the list uh, over this list okay um and based on what we're getting we're performing different operations okay um if value is int we do some stuff if value is m m stands for max pool actually we do some other stuff and otherwise maybe we're going to raise uh, value error we're going to say uh, unknown uh, value and this is going to be like an f string and value okay now one thing i'm, I'm going to say actually is that well i should have put data there one thing i'm going to say is that um, one thing I'm going to say is that, yeah, here, uh, for those who don't know this right here is the same as saying from typing import union and doing union of this. It's, uh, it's just, I don't know what version I have of Python 3.10.8. Um, I think in, uh, they introduced this in 3.9, I believe I might be mistaken, but I think it was 3.9. So you had to import this, and it's like, uh, I have to type so much. I mean, I actually maybe prefer this way. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but this is the same thing, basically. You're saying it's either int or a string. You have this logical or, uh, or operator or the, uh, 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 or the, uh, uh, the uh, bit, bitwise or, as I call it. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so if it's... Uh, um, an integer well that represents number of channels and we're gonna create a we're gonna define or create a layer here okay once we create it and we're gonna put some stuff here so we're gonna populate it uh, once once we populate this layer uh, list we're gonna say well we have these layers let's extend that with the layer okay what extend is gonna do is that it's gonna 
unpack, uh, unpack stuff. So if I have a list one, two, three, I can extend that with a list four, five, six, and I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's not going to do, uh, if I just did this, it's not going to put in the list, right? So it's going to put in, it's going to pretty much like unpack the values and put them in. It's, it's the same as doing, I think PyTorch did it with like plus equal here. Um, yes, they do like plus equal. I don't like doing plus equal. Um, I like doing extend. I, I, I think that's like more idiomatic. Um, uh, and uh, there are some scoping rules that uh, uh, it does not really work with uh, uh, scoping rules of Python, basically. Okay, so uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but um, you could have done this as uh, this as well, basically. But we're going to use extend anyway. Um, and because it's a value, well, initially the int channels were three. We're going to change the int channels to the value, okay? Because that's the number of channels that we get. Initially, it's going to be 64 in case of, well, every single one of these models, model architectures in a way. Okay, uh, what we do next is we put stuff inside this uh, variable here. The first thing is going to be the con2d. Uh, it's going to have some in channels initially. That's the in channels, so that's three. We're going to have uh, um, so three in channels. We're going to have the out channels. That's going to be the value. And we're going to have... Uh, some kernel, well, size is going to be three. We're going to have a kernel size three, and it's going to be. We're going to have what? We're going to have padding, which is one. Uh, next, we're going to have batch norm two D. Okay, and of course, it's not necessary that you memorize these things. I happen to uh, know these, but again, it's not something you need to memorize. Uh, you can look it up, uh, and I mean. It's it's not necessar necessarily uh, like a, a wrong implementation. It's not. It may, it may not follow the the, uh, the paper implementation. Uh, like it's, it may not be one to one kind of uh, mapping there. But uh, even if you change some things here, that should be fine as long as you're following the general kind of structure of the architecture. But I'm kind of using the values that are usually uh, uh, used when it comes to the VGG models. You can uh, and you can see that uh, in the PyTorch here as well. Like uh, if it's M, it seems like they, they use similar kind of things here. A, B, C, A, B, D, E, uh, we called it, I guess, you know, uh, more, you know, have we have more sensible names like 11, 12, 13, 14. But maybe they do some uh, neat, neat tricks with these letters and it's better that way. But anyway, if it's M, they do this kind of stuff. We're going to do the exact, exactly the same thing. Um, for batch norm 2D, because we have out channels valve, well, that's just num features. I like, I like having these... Uh, Kind of like annotations with these keyword keyword kind of arguments in a way, um, and finally we're going to have uh, the ReLU uh, activation functions for nonlinearity. If it's val, what we're going to do is that we're going to append exactly what we do right here, and just so that you see that we do the exactly kind of same operation layers. Sorry, exactly same thing. Okay, um, now. Ellipsis is not uh, uh, callable. I mean, it makes sense. So the features, as I said, it's kind of like a thing that extracts features or generates a representation for an image. And indeed, that's exactly what it's going to do. The way this is going to work is that it's going to define these layers using n and that sequential. And we're going to make layers as follows. We're going to say VGG variant and get the uh, uh, variant get the particular uh, uh, um, values for uh, 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 for the specific key here. So in this case, if it's 11, if we input 11 here, it's going to get these values. Then this list is used right here. It's like a model config. It's a list of ints. Well, com uh, it contains either, uh, well, it contains ints and strings. So it's either int or string, basically. Okay, 64, then we have string and so forth. Then what we do is we have layers that we define in channels, initially three. Again, this can be customized. That we iterate over the config. So initially it's 64. We say, oh, it's an integer. We define the layer. We extend the layers. We update the uh, the uh, number of channels because now the out channels is value. We have to we have to uh, make it so that now the in channels is value because it's an input. The output of one layer is the input to the next layer. Okay. 
simple as that if it's uh, the uh, um, uh, if it's M right here it's the second one in this case third one in that case uh, in uh, in case of BGG 13 um, if it's M well we append the max pool with kernel size 2 and stride 2 just like the uh, 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 just like PyTorch does it okay um, and you you can see that well it's actually pretty much the same with PyTorch too. I, uh, it was not my intention to base it on the uh, PyTorch implementation, but it seems like, well, I didn't base it on PyTorch implementation at all, but it seems like uh, they use the, similar, uh, the same kind of stuff. So kernel size padding one has the same stuff. They do use, okay, they have an option not to use batch norm. I don't have that option. I always use batch norm, but eh, whatever, yeah. Uh, uh, patch norm actually has its uh, own kind of drawbacks uh, and of course uh, one of the major drawbacks is that um, because it uh, the normalization is based on a batch and because that batch is pretty much random uh, the normalization itself has some um, uh, non-deterministic uh, well it has a pretty much non-deterministic behavior okay so uh, and they use in place true oops where did I go? Uh, right here. They use in place true. So they perform the ReLU in place. I didn't do it in place. I could have done it in place. Uh, no problem with that. But I usually, I mean, it depends on a problem. But uh, most of the time when I implement the model, uh, like from scratch, or maybe it's like the first run, first training uh, uh, run of the model, I don't do in place because in place modifies things. Well, as it sounds, in place. Okay. And that means... Um, I may not be able to pretty much, uh, you know, go inside the model and see what every single bit does. It's it, well, it's, it's still going to be possible, but it might require uh, it may require more work because every single operation is going to be in place. So we're doing operations in place. Not every single, sorry, every single value is going to be in place. And so um, maybe I want to see the previous state and the following state as well, and storing both. You know, uh, not not a uh, not a very uh, 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 may not be very convenient. But once I test the model thoroughly, and if I want to concentrate, or if I want to make sure that uh, uh, it's very performant, I perform. Uh, I would make these in place basically, as well as do uh, mixed pre precision training, and probably followed by uh, uh, either uh, post training quantization or quantization aware training. But I'm not going to get into these right now. Anyway. So uh, we extend the layer, we update it. If it's value, we uh, if it's uh, values m, we do append here. And if we get something else, if someone else came in here and said, "Oh, I have like k," that stands for like specific uh, thing. Well, we don't really support it, so that's going to be value error. In the end, it does kind of finish, or you know, we wrap up the model architecture with the uh, average pooling. So average pool 2D with a kernel size of one and stride one. And this notation right here, uh, it may look weird for some, but again, nothing difficult. Uh, what it means is that if I have like A is that, or let's call it X is, um, if I do N and that sequential of this, it's kind, you can think of it this way right here. You can think of it as we're doing one, two, three. Of course, we don't have one, two, three. We have some convolutions, uh, you know, and average pooling uh, as well as batch norm and rally and so forth. But... That's basically what it does. This star operator, it does not dereference anything. We don't really have pointers as in, we don't really have point and, pointer dereferencing in a way. We do have this unpacking operator in Python, which is the star thing, uh, and we use it. Um, um, but yeah, no pointers, although uh, lists are kind of kind of like pointers. Anyway, they're passed by reference. Uh, this is going to be it, actually. This is going to be the entire implementation. Now, let's go ahead and uh, test this. So I'm going to run the training, and uh, uh, then I'm going to run the, the uh, uh, evaluation uh, uh, program that's going to evaluate this model. I think I'm running this for uh, four epochs, so don't expect the performance to be like, I don't know, 99% or something like that. Or, I mean, 99 recall precision and uh, F1, or and maybe accuracy too. I actually do not remember if this is a balanced data set. Maybe it is, but anyway. Um, I'll probably pause the video here. I don't want you to wait till this finishes. Again, I'm training this on um, not a very powerful machine. It's my laptop. Of course, if this was production, I would just SSH into a server and uh, you know get onto the server and do it there. 
on a very powerful GPU. But yeah, anyway, let me pause it now and I'm going to see you in a bit. All right, folks. So uh, the training has finished. And uh, so this is how it looks like. We we had four epochs. Well, we start with zero because, you know, we're computer scientists. Started with a loss of uh, 0.816, ended up with a loss of 0.529. So it was pretty, uh, uh, it was decreasing at every pretty much point here. At every every epoch, we saw the decrease in loss. Very cool. Um, anyway, and we have some, you know, WNB generated uh, stuff. Um, in the end, we got the accuracy of 0.801, the precision of point, uh, point, uh, eight, one, uh, one zero, so 0.81. Uh, recall of 0.802 and f score of 0.804 so um, for it's just four epochs and we used uh, vgg 11 actually you can see right here variant 11 um, and in the evaluation uh, program variant 11 as well we use the cifar 10 data set and i have the data set here okay um now let's also take a look at the uh WNB uh, generated uh, uh, output plots here. There we go. So rural cloud 49. Okay, have the epochs, of course, uh, goes up. Uh, because of course, uh, the more epochs we have, we have three epochs from zero to three. So always increases steps goes up goes down makes sense. Loss. Okay, we can even increase. Okay, it was decreasing at every point. Super cool. Um, and we have some other uh, other other statistics as well. We have system CPU utilization per core, super cool. Um, and process uh, GPU temperature. Yeah, my GPU was probably not doing very well. It's not a very powerful GPU as I mentioned, but yeah. So uh, this is gonna be it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the comment section and I'm gonna see you next time.